everybody and welcome to Board Game Inquisition where we're here to offer you insight and information about your board games. So we're got to that time of the month again where it's time for a monthly roundup and I think as most of you know by now this is like my favourite video to do. Um, this is the one where I sit and I have a chat with you and I talk about some of the changes that have been made in my collection so I like to think and talk about the games I've acquired and some games I've got for review copy games I've been playing, what I've traded for, and things that are on my wish list. And as always, I invite you to play along at home. Um, I wanna hear your answers to the same questions because I'm really excited and curious to see what other people have been playing, what you liked, what you didn't like. You know, if you are here before, you, you, you kind of you know most of this by now, but if you've not, if you've not been here before, well then welcome, it's nice to meet you. Um, thank you for popping in and saying hello, and I'm looking forward to like saying hello and getting to know more about all of you. Um, all right, so let's jump right into this thing, shall we? Um, yeah, <laughs> why not? It is a beautiful day here in Cork. Um, it is gorgeously sunny outside and I am inside trying to film. Oh well. <laughs> um, yeah, at least it's not a Friday, right? So it's Thursday here. So you guys are gonna see this on Monday. So I've all, I've all, there's a long weekend happening. So I have a whole weekend of gaming that I just don't have time to catalog in my monthly roundup, which is kind of sad for me because I like to, you know, fit as many games as possible as I can into a month. But I don't think there's anything new due to arrive between um, now and Monday. So, first things first, let's start with um, new games I've added to my collection. So, last month I got pretty much no new games at all. Really, really proud of myself, um, but not in the way that you might think. Um, it's not the case of I was holding back, you know, that I really wanted this, this and that, and I just told myself no. Really, it was more, oh my god, I have a lot of games. I, there's nothing I was really looking for. Um, this month's been a bit different in the sense that there's been a lot of bargains. <laughs> bargains are dangerous. Um, I love a good deal on a board game. So this is where a lot of this month's acquisitions have come from. So I'm going to start with the first game we got early this month and this would be Dragon Castle um, from Simon Games. Um, any of you who are familiar with it know it's a, it's a Mahjong game. Um, basically the board is set up in, in like, basically like a Mahjong set um, with these lovely chunky tiles and what you do is you take pieces off, matching pieces and you try and create patterns on your own board. Now my edition was cheap, <laughs> super cheap, because the game's been quite expensive for what it is. Um, although to be fair, the components are super good um, and I got mine cheap because my box was really, really battered. Um, any of you follow along on Twitter or Facebook will see how battered my box is. If I can find it, actually I'll show it to you. I think it's not too far. Yep, I get dragon castle. Yeah. So um, those of you who are squeamish should probably look away now. Give you an idea. So yeah, it came, it was supposed to be a copy that had been um, on display, but um, I don't know what kind of display this thing was making. Everything in it was mostly okay. One or two of the boards were slightly dinged, but for getting 33% off, I was happy about it because this was a game I'd wanted for a long time, but it was in the 50 euro range. And for something that seemed kind of like a casual game, you know, with tiles, I put it with Reef and Azul and things like that. It just, it seemed pricey. Um, but to be fair, the what's in it, I think actually makes it worth that much, but I'm quite happy to live with the box. Um, if anybody's good at repairing things, any suggestions on how I could fix it, um, that would be cool. Um, I've never fixed anything before, but I think, it, I think it's worthy. I think it's a good game. And of course the problem is now I could never trade it away <laughs> in this kind of state, so I guess it belongs in our collection forever. So that's Dragon Castle. For All right, so next up, ah, so this one's been on our list for ages. Um, Oh, I'm just going to come straight out and say it. Um, so this is Charterstone from Stonemaier Games. Some of you may have heard of it. It's a legacy game. Mostly it's, I think, the only Stonemaier game I haven't played. And it was one that we'd wanted to for quite some time. But it's a game that seemed to fluctuate a lot in price. So, so um, we've seen it for very, very cheap before and we didn't buy it at the time and regretted it. And so my husband like went to board game prices. I don't know if you go and the guys know that website. Um, you can put in what you want from your collection and you can actually make a watch list of what you're willing to pay for particular games and it will alert you when they get to that price. What a cool feature. Uh, by the way, I have no connection to the website at all. <laughs> I just, I know we use it quite a bit. 
And so he put in, my husband put in a price we're willing to pay for Charterstone. I think we said something like 30 euros. And sure enough, it came up for 30 euros. So Charterstone, Charterstone arrived. Um, obviously, I haven't been able to open all of it because it's one of those legacy games where you can't exactly see what's inside. It's a much bigger box than I thought it was. It's really deep and it's huge. I, I don't know why I had assumed it was smaller. Um, but I have to say it's really exciting looking. I know it's not one that a lot of people talk about anymore and it was a bit of a flop for Stonebuyer Games. Haven't figured out why yet. Hopefully, I will. Hopefully I'll never find out why it was a flop and I'll just enjoy it. But um, it looks really, really interesting. It looks like a Euro game, you know, when you're well, farming and stuff. I don't know. Looks good. I like it. <laughs> but I'm glad that we finally picked it up. Okay, so next on our list of um, things where we went shopping um, is Ticket to Ride New York. Now, this might surprise some people. Um, for a very long time, I had all of the Ticket to Rides. We used to, when we started playing board games, we used to play a lot of Ticket to Ride. Um, and then it just waned over time. I think there's something about maturing as a gamer that kind of moves you away from some of those original loves, or they just, they don't, you know, hit the same spots, I suppose, that they used to. So we got rid of all of our ticket rides. We kept one, um, the Nordic Countries one, because that's that's my favourite, um, and also it's purple. Um, so that was a pretty nice thing. But I heard great things about Ticket to Ride New York. A lot of people had talked about it and that it was a quick version of Ticket to Ride. And I was like, you know, a quick version of Ticket to Ride doesn't sound terrible at all, does it? Because Ticket to Ride is still a fabulous game. I, you know, um, we're like, okay, why not? It, it, it was it was on sale. Um, and we got something else at the same time. I'll jump onto that in a minute, but I'll finish my Ticket to Ride story. Um, so we got Ticket to Ride home and we opened up the map. It's a beautiful insert, by the way. It's gorgeous inside. And it's it's Ticket to Ride, all right. <laughs> you know the way most of the maps in Ticket to Ride have a special niche thing that they do, right? So the German map, for instance, has passengers um, as its special thing. There's another one that has you creating loops. Um, you know, they all have some sort of thing that belongs to only them. And I expected the New York map to have a unique thing that was for only New York. Um, and apparently the only unique thing is the fact that it's fast. I was I was kind of disappointed by that to be honest. Um, I expected there to be something to give it a bit of pizzazz, but no, it's it's just basic ticket to ride, but faster. So there you go, folks. That's kind of my kind of my thought on it all. Um, yes, yeah, so if you like ticket to ride and you want to play it fast, I see absolutely nothing wrong with this game. But I was just expecting a little bit more. Okay, so what came with um, Charter's Tone or with Ticket to Ride New York? Um, is a game that I just got la traded for last month and I haven't had a chance to talk to you guys about yet and this is Key Flower. Um, and I'll talk about it more in a little bit but suffice to say that we like Key Flower enough to buy an expansion for Key Flower which is Key Flower the Farmers. And this is the one with all the animal meeples. So yeah, that was totally helping base our decision. I haven't played with it yet um, but I look, forward, I look forward to it. It's quite a big box for an expansion that's made entirely of tiles and meeples. But there you go, folks, it's just how it is. But I'll talk more about Keyflower when I talk about games we've been playing because I think Keyflower is kind of a, a, it deserves a bit of time. Okay, and then the final thing that we got. Um, so we got an expansion for Celestia. Does anybody you know Celestia? It's one where you're in the little 3D airship and you're basically bluffing your way to see how far you can get on the ship um, before you have to leap off. Um, it's really 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 fun i think the only way to put it i was dubious when i got it originally that it wouldn't hold up with two players like it might with more players it's actually all right with two um it's even more fun with more people and so um, we got the expansion for it which is called a little initiative and it is basically like a little 3d um, cardboard barrel that tags the time like a tags along yeah I suppose maybe yeah tags along behind your little airship and you can jump into it for safety um, so it's also the smallest expansion box I've ever seen it's like I know it's like half a cigarette packet it's really thin um I was like Jesus is this really the expansion <laughs> um yeah super small but super cute haven't had a chance to play with that yet but it, that's kind of Celestia's kind of I would consider it nearly a party game and we don't often have parties but um I do like having the party selection for you know when people come around um, I love when people come to visit and they want to play board games. I had a lot of that happen last week. I had a really busy week last week and I had people come and stay with me and want to play board games. Uh, I just think that's so much fun. Every, everyone's just like, you're the board game lady now. To show us your wares. I was like, oh yes. And I spent some time picking out games for people to play with. So that was, that was kind of fun. Um, and we'll, yeah, I'll talk about that again in a little minute. 
So those are all the things I actually um, bought this month. It's actually quite a few when you add them up, but most of them were on sale, so you, I can't say no to a good sale. Um, it's pretty much true. And I'm gonna put Dragon Castle down because it's still sitting on my lap. <laughs> and it's heavy! <laughs> it's really heavy. It's got these huge, gorgeous tiles in it. So heavy. Okay, so games I've got received for review. This is a lot. <laughs> Which is really surprising, right? Um, I hadn't I hadn't anticipated anything like this happening. Um, but we'll start off with ah yes. Um, so first things first, we've got an Irish game um, for review. Um, so I'm really happy about that. Yay! Um, it's nice to have not something not quite local, I suppose. What do you call it? National. Um, yeah, and a, a game a game from my country, and I'm going to be reviewing it. Um, and it is called Dice Summoners. Some of you may have seen it on Kickstarter and it is basically about a game about using dice to summon monsters to fight for you. Um, yeah, it's an, it's very, it's interesting. Um, I have a problem with some of the components. I think the cards do not feel good. I think this is a game where you'd have to leave the cards or it'd be pretty much unplayable. But the gameplay itself is kind of interesting. I haven't put too many games into it yet. It's, it's next on the agenda, so um, I'll get into that a little more. But there's a lot of potential here, I think, for something like really interesting and really, really fun. Um, it's definitely not what I was anticipating out of the box. So, you know, there's hope, there's hope for there's hope for that it looks good so far um the second thing that arrived this month and has already come and gone out of my possession is sensor ghosts um so sensor ghosts um from ren games some of you may know um is having its kickstarter campaign right now Woo, you should totally go and check it out and it comes from the designers of assembly um which any of you who've been following along here for a very very long time will know it was one of my first kickstarter previews um, Assembly is a fantastic puzzle game for one to two players in which you're escaping from a, a spacecraft where the computer has gone crazy. It's a cool theme um, and I really liked it. And this um, Sensor Ghost Kickstarter campaign has two expansions for Assembly as part of it and they're also super cool. They just add a, some more to the game and make it even more frustrating. Sensor Coast then is kind of the follow on for where you've escaped the ship and now you have to traverse through space to make it back home safely. Um, and it's tough. It is not an easy puzzle game. Yet again, it's for one to two players. Um, and you have to basically flip over tiles and see what's underneath them and see if it's your doom or if you can make it safely through the kind of asteroid field. Um, and the tiles move at the end of each round. So it's, it's, a, it's a toughie, but it's fascinating at the same time. I think it's a really good game. And if you liked Assembly or if you liked the idea of just a really interesting puzzle game that you could play by yourself or team up with somebody else and play it co-op, um, I definitely think you should check them out on Kickstarter right now. <laughs> that sounded like a sales pitch, didn't it? No, it's not. I think it's a, I think it's a very good game. I think a lot of people will enjoy it, will enjoy that kind of stuff. And you should, you should, if, you, if those are, you know, if that's what you like, you should go and see it. Okay, so next. So this is really fascinating because I received some review copies from Cosmos Games. Cosmos Games, I know well because they've made my copy of Settlers of Catan and Spacefarers of Catan. And when they put a shout out that they were looking for reviewers, I was really surprised that um, the guy who was organizing it recognized me. <laughs> He's like, I know your Instagram account. I was like, really? <laughs> That's so nice. Yeah, it was wonderful. So I expected to be sent one game to review. I in fact got a box. So you'll be seeing a lot of these <laughs> um, in a little bit. I'm sorry I keep brushing my hair back. It's in my face. Um, so the first game um, that came out of the box that I was really excited to see was one called Silk. Um, Silk was released at Essen last year and it was actually on my pick of things to pick up um, after my disastrous trip to Essen. Um, and Silk is basically you are a silkworm farmer and you're trying to keep them safe from a terrible monster and have them make more silk and eat food. Um, it's basically a kind of a very interesting take on area control um, as you're trying to fit as many guys into spots as possible um, and move them around. Um, I like it a lot so far. The artwork on it is gorgeous. The inserts and things and the component quality is super nice. Um, so I look forward to playing more of that. Um, next up is Dungeon Raiders. Um, Dungeon Raiders is a reprint, I've been led to believe. Didn't know that, I've never heard of it before. And it's a card game where you delve into a dungeon. And I know there's been 40 million of these made, um, so I wasn't expecting much. But it's <laughs> it's actually really fun, it's very, very clever. You have a hand of cards and I'm numbered one to five. Everyone has the exact same hand. And you have to use these cards to overcome obstacles, you know, each dungeon you're in. And there's five, so there'll be five things in the dungeon. So you have to use one card for each event. 
Um, and the trick is deciding what everyone else is going to put down and what number you should put down. Because the aim of the game is to come out with the most money, but not to have the most wounds. That's really important, how damaged you are. Um, and the game basically wants you to make sure that you're never last or something bad happens to you. But there's a lot of kind of thinking about it going on. It surprised me with how um, clever it was. Um, and I've really enjoyed it so far. So a review for that should be coming fairly soon. It's good stuff. Um, next up after Dungeon Rangers is Papua. And I've not got to Papua yet. Uh, it looks like an exploration game. I've done an unboxing, right? Because obviously, because I do unboxings now, it means something shows up, but I can't just open it anymore. No, no, no. I'm like, fetch the rig, fetch the lights, open them. Um, yeah, so I've had to unbox everything that way. Um, so yeah, Papua looks like an exploration game. It's got um, like screens and stuff. It looks like a set collection. Um, beyond that, I don't know anymore, although it looks very, very good so far and very, very classy. I'm very eager to get to it, but it needs a little bit more time than the other games that came in the box, hence why it's in the queue. Um, and the final thing I got was an exit game. I can't remember the name, but I'm looking over your shoulder to try and see, can I read it from here, but I can't. Um, it's an advanced looking exit game and I've never played one. I've never done an exit. I've never done an unlock game. Um, please send help. Um, I've, never, I've never tried these before. So I want to make sure I can set aside some time to try it out because obviously, you know, they're games that you don't play in half an hour. Um, but I'm intrigued. Um, I'm not intrigued by the fact it's a very high difficulty rating on the side of the box. I'm doomed. Um, I don't know if I should actually, you know, um, do a playthrough of that. Although I've had enough of playthroughs at the minute, lads. Every time I do a playthrough, there's something wrong with it. I, I'm convinced that we don't play most of our games correctly. Um, almost entirely certain at this point. But <laughs> thank God I don't do um, tutorial videos. This is why I don't teach rules, because I couldn't teach rules. It would be terrible. But what I can show you is what a game looks like and maybe how it goes. Just don't pay too much attention to what I say or do. Yeah, so uh, yeah, exit game. Very, very cool. Okay, so this last game is not quite not the most exciting but the one I was most chuffed to receive um, and this is a game called Fantasy Ranch and yes it has horses on the cover. It's a game about owning a ranch of horses and winning um, enough prizes to buy more horses to make your ranch all the better. Yeah I know I know the little girl inside of me left at the thought of, thought of owning my own ranch um, but don't let the kind of the theme turn you off because there's lots of games that are about all sorts of unusual themes like wine making for God's sake. Why should kind of horses be because look down upon just because you know there's something that you know might appeal to children or little girls in particular. Um, it looks like a very interesting Euro game. I've only had one game of it so far and I've played it kind of on the, the basic mode. The basic mode was indeed basic, um, but I do like the fact that it comes with three different modes so that you could play it with your kids, you could play it yourself. I think that's really cool. It's got some fantastic production values. Um, everything in it is, is super stunning. And I was really, really chuffed that I, I managed to wrangle myself a copy of this, that the designers were happy to send one to me. Um, because, you know, ponies! <laughs> So there'll be more, um, you'll be hearing more about all of these games soon enough, um, gradually, as I work my way through them week by week. But I was not anticipating having so many review copies right now. So as you can see, I'm probably, like, you know, filled up for another month or so. Um, is there any of them that you're looking forward to hearing more about? Mm -hmm. Have you played any of them and can give me some insight? I'd be really interested in that. Um, yeah, and what new games have you added to your collection this month? Um, if at all, and, and if not, I suppose, you know, why not? Are you happy with what you've got already? That, that's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, okay, next section, trades. Um, so with the UKGE coming up, um, basically, oh yeah, that's starting like today, isn't it? So there's no point, you know, wishing you all a good time, but the time you see this, it'll have happened. I hope you had a good time with the UKGE. Um, nobody wants to trade right now um, in the UK because they're all going to the, the big con and they're gonna trade their games there. So it's been very hard to get in any trades, but we did manage to get one and I'm very chuffed about it. So we traded away a copy of Dominant Species. Don't get me wrong, I love Dominant Species. I think it's a fabulous game. I just think it doesn't fit quite right for us because it takes so long to play. And I think it will be better with more than two players. And we traded it away for Australia with a Z. Um, yes, the Cthulhu um, Australia game by Martin Wallace. 
So when I've had my eye on for a little while, um, Board Game Rants did some very interesting um, reviews of it, if you want to go check those out. Um, I know that's where I, my interest came from to see more about it. And so far I've taken the lid off and looked inside the box. There is a lot of stuff and I'm looking forward to getting to it. Um, you see, this is the problem with reviewing board games that I've recently discovered is that when you have a lot of things to review, it means you don't have time for your own games. So it's kind of kind of sad, but also kind of awesome. I, I, I don't know where to put this, because if you look at the games I've played most this month, they're all review copies, because I haven't really had time to delve into my own collection much. Um, it doesn't help that I've also been kind of busy. So, you know, what time I have, I need to kind of work on the reviews. But it's a fine line, isn't it, between, I suppose, doing something you love and doing something you love. I don't know. It's a strange one. Um, I just wish there was more time for more games, I think, in general, not just mine. Um, but, you know, review copies, I think, are always really exciting because they're oftentimes something you wouldn't have picked out for yourself. It's very rare that I got a game that I really, really, really wanted. Um, Wingspan, case in point. But beyond that, I think this is a great way for me to kind of expand my own horizons. I often get surprised by games that I get to review. I, 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 things I would never have picked up for myself turn out to be really, really great. So I'm, I'm blessed that these happen to me at all, that I get any re review copies. Um, but I do wish I had some time, more time for my own games. I, you know, I got a lot of them. Um, okay. So that was my trade for Australia. Um, have you made any trades this month? Is anybody any good at getting trades done? I gotta assume in America you can get loads of trades, right? Because there's loads of people, but you're also further apart. Yeah, maybe it's tough wherever you go, right? But I do love trading when you can manage it. It's so satisfying. All right, so next up. So games I've been playing. Whew, okay, as I said, most of these um, revolve around <laughs> review copies. So the games I've played most are Assembly, Sensor Ghosts, um, and Six Gun Showdown. So Six Gun Showdown, um, I released the video for that this Wednesday. It was a Kickstarter playthrough. Yes, where I made an error, of course, typical. Um, but it's a super fun um, kind of, well, it's a shootout. Um, and you need to kind of have nerves of steel and lightning quick quick reflexes to take out your opponent because some of it is dexterity based where the first person to shoot is the first person to touch their card and if you want to try and shoot back you all have to touch your card before they can um so it's a really interesting little, little game it's it's really really fun um if it sounds anyway interesting go check out the actual you know preview for that um it is literally just myself my husband having a go at the game and i laugh so much when i listen back to it um but it's fun um and i think i think it's something a lot of people could really get into actually and it's going to be available on kickstarter on the 6th of the 6th at 6 p.m isn't that cool yeah i quite like that too so i got to play a lot of that unsurprisingly and i was sensor goes so now i'll talk a little bit about games i did actually have time to play of my own which is rare and few and far between um but keyflower is the first one that comes to mind this is from rnd games keyflower is the epitome of a euro game you got color you got some colored meeples and you got some colored cubes and basically you're building like a little village i guess is the word and you bid for tiles um, against your opponent the special thing about this game is that the meeples only come in three colors and you bid using the color of meeples so if i put a yellow meeple down on a tile and i want it you have to put two yellow down to beat me and this theme of the color of the meeples continues throughout the game and it's really really clever so for instance if you you bid for these tiles they all do things you know they'll make something or do something nice for you when you put them in your um little village you can use your opponent's tiles <laughs> yeah it's real friendly um, so f I can put one red meeple down on your tile and use your forge or whatever it is. Um, and then you can also use it, but you'll need two red meeples to do so. Ha ha ha. And the game is played over four seasons. Um, it goes really, really quick and it's super clever. I, I'm, I keep saying I'm surprised by games. Maybe I, I need to be more open-minded, but it, it's very good. I really liked it. It's got a lot of interesting choices, um, without being difficult. So it's very chill, so I heartily recommend Keyflower. We got to play at least two games of that, I think, this month. It doesn't sound like a lot, I know, but with the way we've been playing games, I'm not surprised. 
Um, the other thing I'm going to bring up that we got to play while well, I had guests here, so there was five of us in total. So we put, so you know when five arrived, you're like, crap, what games go beyond five? So we sat down and went through all our five player games and eventually picked Quacks, um, or the Quacks of Quidlinburg and played that with some people who hadn't played it before and they had a great time and Quacks works so good at any player account. I think that's the magic of it because everyone takes simultaneous turns and it's fairly easy to understand you know, people go I just don't go over this number of these things out of my bag and we can keep you know bidding um, and they had a good time and I had a good time and I love games that you can play with anybody like that you can literally just show somebody and they'll get it um, and those games are incredibly special I'm a big fan of Quacks and I think it's brilliant to be able to do that at uh, so many player accounts. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I've been playing. Well, obviously I've been playing some of the new games that landed, but you know, like Dragon Castle and Ticket to Ride New York, but you kind of heard all about those. Um, what about you guys? What have you been playing? Um, is there anything that's completely, you know, overwhelmed you lately that you just can't stop, can't get your hands off of? Um, or, you know, if you've something, I suppose, you wish you could play more of. I always think that that's an interesting place to go, isn't it? You know, if you could sit down now and play any game, what would it be? It's a question I can't answer. <laughs> I have too many games I want to play. It's difficult, difficult stuff. But please do tell me what you've been playing uh, or, or anything that disappointed you that you tried out this month. Have I any, had any disappointments this month? Not so far, actually. So far, things have been going pretty good, actually. There's nothing, there's been nothing truly terrible. So, you know, that's a bonus. Okay, um, the last part of this. I haven't done this one in a while, um, which is wish list. Um, so, I obviously, I want to hear your wish list. Mine has, you know, diminished in capacity quite seriously. But um, I always, I've put it out for a couple of months because I felt like, you know, I have enough games for something on my wish list. But I do have something for my wish list. And this is Res Arcana. This comes from the designer who made Race for the Galaxy. And I'm a really big fan of Race for the Galaxy. Um, from what I know of it, it is a card game and you get to play eight cards in total um, to kind of combo things out. Um, we love card games here, um, love Race for the Galaxy. It was kind of a no-brainer. And the best news is that I heard this morning that I've arranged a trade for it. So you'll probably hear about that next month. Um, as far as I'm aware, we're trading Tricarian for Res Arcana, but I'll believe it when it arrives. <laughs> I, I don't, but I don't pin, uh, don't pin my hopes in anything till it's here and in my hands. Um, but that was basically, basically it. It's a game that was a game that just kept popping up um, a little bit in my feed, and I was like, I'm pretty sure this is something we'd really like. Um, also, I could do with a good card game these days. We're fairly picky about card games. It's hard to find a good one. So, um, so yeah, that's basically, you know, where my wish list goes. I'm curious to hear yours. Maybe it'll be more elaborate. Um, what would be at the top of it anyway? Um, that if a game could show up on your doorstep right now, what would it be? Hmm. <laughs> All kinds of good things. So, yeah, that's pretty much everything from Board Game Inquisition for this month. It's, it's been a hell of a busy. Um, it looks like another couple of, <laughs> couple of weeks, a month or two um, of busyness ahead of me. Um, I guess I should, I, I know, I am thankful, I'm, I am thankful, and I'm thankful to all of you for kind of sticking with me and watch me and I'm doing my best to put out um, a lot of content, and what I feel is like a lot of content, sometimes I, sometimes I forget how much stuff I do, so like, I do two videos a week, I normally do an unboxing on a Monday and the main video on the Wednesday, right, I do a mini review on a Tuesday, on Thursday I film, on Friday I do Facebook live videos, well I try to anyway whenever I have something to talk about. Um, I, well, it's no point telling you I'll be doing one tomorrow. You, you know, you'll be long gone by then. Um, but if there's anything you think I could do better or that you'd like to see me do, um, I'm always open to suggestions. Um, I'm, you know, I only want to make things better and improve as I go along. You know, I'm, I'm about one person and I'm trying to figure my way through all of this stuff. But I want it to be the best stuff I can make and I want you guys to really enjoy it too. So uh, yeah, I'll call, I'll call it quits guys. So you've been watching Board Game Inquisition. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, why not like or subscribe or tell a friend I exist? That'd be pretty great. Um, and I'm just spouting the stuff I spout at the end of every video. It's so automatic at this point, I can't turn it off. Yeah, thank you for being here with me. Have a fabulous weekend. Let me know about your games. I wanna hear all about them. And until next time, I'll be here playing games, asking questions, and of course, perusing my collection. Take care everybody, bye-bye.